I started this small side gig about five years ago with some cutting boards, thinking that I was in the big leagues of woodworking. I needed a name, so I came up with Molly Wally. Molly after my daughter, and Wally because students at the school I teach at have trouble pronouncing my last name. When our son was born, people joke that he's going to feel left out. Enter the Oliver Table. Like all of my table projects, I started by working on the top. This one is going to measure 7 feet long by 42 inches wide and is made from 6 quarter white oak. I start at the jointer, giving the boards one flat face. My new 12 inch jointer has been a dream. Being able to flatten boards that wide is fantastic. From there I move on to the planer and get the other face nice and parallel to the one that I just jointed. I bring the final thickness of these boards to just over one and a quarter inch thick. Once the boards are planed, I go back to the jointer and edge joint them. This gives each board a perfect 90 degree edge that I can then run against the fence of the table saw to rip the boards to the right width. With all of the boards now edge jointed and face jointed and planed, I can head over to the table saw to rip each board to the right width. When using the table saw, I wear a glove in my left hand to protect these soft mitts from any impending splinters. I know it's maybe not the best practice, but I make sure to keep my hand well back at the blade and it's something that I'm comfortable with. Now that all of the boards are ripped to width, I can lay them out on the workbench and play around with the best orientation. I like to flip my grains to help keep tabletops flat, but with this table design you also have a bit of extra security that I'll talk about later. With the boards laid out, I strike a few lines to mark out where I will add dominoes. All of the joints in this project I'm going to use dominoes, but dowels would work just as well. With the domino mortises cut, I start the glue up. I didn't include the entire clip, but from start to finish this glue up took 8 minutes. I like to add a piece of angle iron on each end of the table and clamp each individual board to it. I feel it like it adds a bit of peace of mind and that it will stay flat during the glue up when applying clamping pressure across each joint. Adding the extra dominoes really makes the glue up process a lot smoother and less stressful. Once clamping pressure has been applied and the angle iron is secured on each end, I like to take baby wipes to wipe away any of the glue that's squeezed out on the top. After the glue has settled a little bit, I will flip the table over and scrape away any of the excess from the bottom with an old chisel. While the tabletop is drying, I move on to milling the pieces of white oak for the base. I take pieces of 6 quarter white oak that are 32 inches long and face joint and edge joint them. Then I glue up two pieces together to give me a final thickness of just over 2.5 inches. Once the glue is dry on all of these pieces, I once again face joint, edge joint, plane, and then head to the table saw and rip them to the final dimensions. Each individual component of the sides of the base will be 2.5 inches square.
Once all the pieces are cut to final dimensions, I start to cut the angles. The nice thing about this design is that for all of the pieces, once you set the angle on your miter saw or miter gauge if you're going to use your table saw, you can kind of just lock it in and cut each piece at that same angle. So even if the angle isn't exactly 10 or 12 or 15 degrees, as long as it's always the same, it doesn't really matter. I cut one end of each leg and then mark out the final length. My legs are splaying at 15 degrees and I'm going to use a 3 quarter inch thick cap on top of them where the tabletop will attach. So my final length of each leg is 29.75 inches. Keep the off cuts from all of these cuts, they'll come in handy later. For the middle piece, the horizontal one that connects the two vertical ones, I cut one side and then lay it between the leg pieces to see how long it needs to be in order to keep the legs narrow enough that they don't exceed the tabletop width. In this case, I went with 22 and a quarter inches. The stretcher that I'm going to use to connect the two sides of the base is two and a quarter inches wide. This is an arbitrary width, you can cut yours to whatever you like, just make sure that you adjust the measurement of the dado you cut in the cross pieces of your sides. I mark the center and then measure over one and an eighth inches to the right and to the left and mark where my dado will start and end. Then I use the stretcher bar and set the height of my table saw blade to make sure that when I glue this piece in, it's a perfect fit. Next, I use my miter gauge and start to cut the dado out. I cut each line and then hog out the rest of the material in the middle. With the dado cut, I can move on to gluing the sides together. I put the cross piece between the two vertical pieces and measure up 5 inches from the bottom of the leg. Again, this is an arbitrary distance. You can kind of choose whatever you'd like to make yours. I just know that with 5 inches up, it makes my base just under 38 inches wide. Then I use my square against the outside vertical part of the leg and mark a line for where I will put two 10 millimeter by 50 millimeter dominoes. Again, you could use dowels for this, maybe just strike a couple lines and add four dowels depending on the size that you're going to use. Next, I take the offcuts from earlier and use double-sided carpet tape to tape them back on the outside of the legs. These will make sure that the clamping pressure goes straight across the whole joint. Add a bunch of glue and dominoes and call it a day. I got a lot done on day one. The next morning I come out and take the leg substructures out of the clamps and get ready to add the long stretcher to attach the two sides together. The stretcher I used was 55 inches long. This will leave a span of 50 inches in between the two sides, perfect to fit two people comfortably. I glue that in the dado and let it dry.
While that glue dries, I cut the table to size using my track saw and then rough sand the bottom of the table with the aggressive mode on my Bosch sander. This makes really quick work of any minor variation in the joints and marks that are left from machining. Next, I need to add the top piece to each side of the base so that I can attach the tabletop later. I take a piece of 3 quarter inch thick white oak that is the same 2.5 inches width as the legs and 36 inches long and mark for dominoes. Then I cut the dominoes in the top piece as well as the vertical parts of the legs and glue it on. When that's dry, I flip the base over and use my router with a flush trim bit and clean up each end of the stretcher. I like to let that stick out a little bit when gluing just because coming back after with the flush trim bit means it will be perfect on each end. After I hit it with the router, a light sand and everything is perfect. The last part of the base that I need to add on is the angled pieces from the top stretcher where the tabletop will attach down to the stretcher that attaches each side. To do this I cut one end of the piece at 45 degrees and then to ensure that the angle I cut on the other end is perfect I temporarily clamp it to the stretcher and strike a line. Now theoretically it should be 45 degrees as well but to account for any minor variations doing it this way make sure that it sits nice and flush with the stretcher. After I cut that second angle, I keep the off cut again so that I can tape it on and use it to apply clamping pressure equally. I mark the center of the top piece and then the middle of the angled piece so that when I'm gluing them on, I know that they'll be perfectly in line. While that dries, I begin the long and tedious process of sanding the tabletop, every woodworker's favorite part of the project. I start at 100 grit, then move to 150, 180, and finally 220. When the base is dry, I do the same for it. I also decided to round over the corners of the top pieces, using a lid to mark some radiuses, radii, I don't know, one of those two, and then just sanded it away. Then I drill some holes in the top pieces so that I can use some bolts to attach the tabletop to the base. I drill these holes at 5 eighths of an inch. When all the sanding is done, I could apply this really light grey stain, which I love. I'm not usually a huge fan of stains, I like to keep my projects pretty natural, but this one is light and looks fantastic. I apply fairly heavily and then come back and wipe off any excess. I didn't have any disposable gloves left, so I used a welding glove. Looks good, right? With the stain on, I let it dry for about 24 hours and then I add my finish. For this, I'm spraying on three coats of General Finishes High Performance Water-Based Finish with a satin sheen. I sand with 220 grit between each coat. If 
Finally, when everything is dry, I flip the tabletop and put the base on and measure it to be centered. There will be 15 inches of overhang at either end, more than enough room to sit comfortably. I mark the center of each hole with the same 5 8 inch drill bit and then drill 3 8 inch holes to install the threaded inserts. I'll use 1 quarter by 20 bolts to attach the top and the 5 8 inch holes allow for plenty of seasonal movement. And with that, the table is done and ready to be brought in for some final pictures and video before delivering it to my client's new home. I love the way it turned out and couldn't be happier with the way the Oliver table is designed. Maybe one day, the real Oliver will get out there and stop being lazy and help me do some sanding. Thanks so much for watching and please be sure to hit that like and subscribe button down at the bottom.